Hi, my name is Beth Gully, and today I want to talk to you about poetry meditations, a mindful response to negative headlines. So I am a teacher at Johnson County Community College and also a Kansas poet. Um, and I wrote a book called uh, Shithole Countries with the bad word uh, blocked out. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about how I came to this. Um, Many times in our lives, we have negative t headlines. For example, right now, we have the coronavirus. Before that, we had the election. Um, we have a lot of disappointing things that bombard us in the news all the time, and it's really easy to get overwhelmed and weighed down. Um, this happened to me, in particular, in the spring of 2018. Um, as part of my job at the community college, I had a great opportunity to visit Pakistan as part of a State Department grant. And as I was getting on the plane to leave for Pakistan, um, our president started tweeting about how he wanted to get rid of all of the State Department grants to Pakistan um, and how they were terrible partners and he didn't want to work with them anymore. And I thought to myself, oh, please, could you just wait until my trip is over before you start to uh, say things about Pakistan that will make them unhappy? But he didn't. So I got to Pakistan, I had a wonderful time at a conference that I was presenting at. And then on the way home in the airport, I got to see um, that President Trump was calling, uh, he famously called uh, El Salvador, Haiti, and all of Africa shithole countries. Um, and that particularly hurt because I grew up in El Salvador and I think it's a beautiful place. Um, and so I was meditating on this on the plane, and I really wanted to not think about all the bad things people were saying in the world, and I wanted to put good things in the world and think about good things about those people and places. And so this book was born from that. So what I did was I started a series of poems where I would write one good tiny meditation about El Salvador and then one good tiny meditation about Pakistan. I started them in pairs. And then later I expanded, to also started writing about Kenya. So what I'd like to do now is share with you several poems from this book um, <clears throat> so that we can replace that negative image with beautiful images. This first poem is about um, the church where I used to attend when I was a child living in El Salvador. El Salvador, 1986. Taste and see. Heaps of honeysuckle hung behind the church, hearkening to small children, to taste and see, the Lord is good. And then to partner with that, I have a poem about Pakistan from 2018. Tea. Jet lagged and wide eyed, we wandered across the schoolyard. Three ladies, loosely covered in bright scarves, noticed us. They asked if we'd had tea. Not yet, we say. Here, drink mine, one girl says. I drink her lunch tea while a skinny cat nibbles her food and we pose for a photo. Another poem from Pakistan, 2018. We got to go to the Indus River. <clears throat> the lucky might see blind dolphins playing in the Indus River. I'm 10 times lucky. So I also um, added poems about Kenya, that I, a place I got to visit in May of 2018. Um, this is called Too Much Mud for One Baby Wipe. After hiking back down the red dirt road turned creek in the overnight rain, there was too much mud for one baby wipe. Instead, we took turns soaping up and pouring cold water on ourselves behind a tin screen in the moonlight. Such grace could not be sponsored by indoor plumbing. And then lastly, I want to end with a couple of poems about my childhood in El Salvador. This one is called Hydroelectric. It's um, about a time that I went on a field trip to a hydroelectric plant. On our field trip to the hydroelectric plant, I remember squishing in next to Kelly on a dirty black floor of the white Toyota Hi-Ace van. I remember the acrid chili pepper smell of fresh coffee beans drying on the straight reflective lines on the road. I remember getting peanut butter stuck to the roof of my mouth 
and washing it down with fizzy, stinging Coca-Cola before running to play hide-and-seek on the rough, ancient, unprotected Mayan ruin. The slap of my sandals against the stone. I do not remember the hydroelectric plant. And then this is the last one that I'll do from this book. It's called An Open Letter to Kelly Large's Mom. Kelly was a friend of mine as a child. Um, I was maybe not a good friend to her as she was to me, but I still am remembering her and what a good person she was. You shared your beautiful tender girl with the world, me, and we pulled her hair and acted out our jealousy towards her. You pulled her away to keep her safe because the world, me, brought secular music and cussing into your home. What you fail to see is that even now, almost 30 years later, Kelly's light is still leading me in the way that I should go, home to the safe, forgiving heart of God. So we're gonna need a few poems that are also uplifting from an anthology called Storm A Comin'. This is called Things Can't Always Get Worse. When it seems like things always get worse, I remember the library in walking distance, and that they don't yet require metal detector bag search, but they've stretched the rules to allow coffee and sleeping. We can read whatever we want until closing time. And then the second one I want to share from here is called Zigzag. He doesn't run well. The blue moths camouflaged in gravel distract him. The knuckle-sized frogs send him zigzag. The ornate box turtle runs him off the path. If you want him to power through in a straight line, divorce him from the trees. And then I also want to share a couple of poems from Bards Against Hunger, which is a wonderful anthology put together by former poet laureate uh, Kevin Rabbis. This poem is about my mother, who I think is wonderful. Not squashed. Bowl, no rice, with pinto beans, chicken, hot and mild sauce, cheese, and extra lettuce. I let my mother order for herself this time at Chipotle. I'm not up to explaining why she needs extra lettuce. But I'm not interested in squashing her independent ideas. She never squashed mine. And then the last one I want to read from this book is called Mexican Food. Mexican food, he explained to his Punjabi friend, is what we eat all the time in the United States. Tacos, burritos, frijoles, arroz, and Coca-Cola to wash it down. On our side of the border, Coke comes in a can, but you can still get it in a bag on the other side sometimes. Coca-Cola, my friend is why there won't be any stinking wall. I'd like to leave you with uh, three more recent poems that I've written, and then also share with you um, a poem from another poet who I love, who does a really good job of taking negative situations and writing positive poems about them, and then leave you with a task. Um, so this is called The Harpist. I remember tonight's performer as a college student. He sprawled across the desk with his black boots kicked out into the aisle. He wrote brilliantly, but never turned in finished products. I don't introduce myself after the beautiful harp performance. People should be allowed to live in the present, not be ambushed by their former selves. Like my cat, once a stray who rode 30 miles on the motor of a towed car, is now the bell of our home. The harpist is no longer a student, but the darling everyone in this crowded room has paid to mesmerize us with his music. And this is a poem about getting lost. It's called Jose and I Chat About Cheese. Jose and I chat about cheese in an interfaith art zone I'd not been to before. The GPS led me here but I didn't believe it, and I parked in the dark two blocks away. What a relief to come into the light and to find a familiar face. 
And then this last poem of mine is called Trees. Back in sixth grade, I learned trees are the kindest thing I know for Friday afternoon recitation at Aunt Hazel's school. Little did I know what I was saying. It just rolled like a chocolate drop on my tongue. Now, after all the climate science and well-being research, I realize truly trees really are the kindest thing that I know. So one of my favorite poets, Ted Couser, um, wrote a beautiful book when he was diagnosed with cancer and he was going through chemo and he needed to get exercise, but he couldn't go out in the sunlight. So he took early morning walks and then would come home and write a poem about his walk and send it on a postcard to his friend, Jim Harrison. So um, he inspired me and so I wanted to share one of his poems. Um, it's called Sunny and Still Cold. Found on the gravel road I walked this morning, one beer can, part full of frozen tobacco juice that when I shook it came apart like chunks of amber and a quarter size piece from a fluted china plate with a soft pink rose the size of a pencil eraser and a curl of flying pale blue ribbon. In a nearby tree, five noisy crows who had, not, who had seen me stopping there were busy creating a plausible story. I mean, another beautiful poet who does a really good job of helping us with our perspective is Naomi Shahib Nye. Um, when I first discovered her, this is the poem of hers that I read, and I love it. Um, this is why I bought her book. It's called Ted Couser is My President. When I travel abroad, I will invoke Ted's poems at checkpoints. Yes, barns. Yes, memory. Gentility. The quiet little wind among stones. If they ask, are you American? I will say, Ted's kind of American. No, I carry no scissors or matches. Yes, horizons and dinner tables. Yes, weather, the honesty of it. Buttons, chickens, feel free to dump my purse. I'll wander to the window, stare out for days. Actually, I have never been to Nebraska, except with Ted, who hosted me dozens of times, but we have never met. His deep assurance comforts me. He's not big on torture at all. He could probably sneak into your country when you weren't looking and say something really good about it. Have you noticed those purple blossoms in a clump beside your wall? All right, so the last thing is that I would challenge you to take a negative situation that you're dealing with and meditate on it and flip it into a positive poem. I would suggest Japanese forms work really well for this um, because they're image driven and they're pretty short. Uh, the haiku, of course, with the 575, um, or of course the famous Ginsburg sentence that is 17 syllables and you can break it up however you want. Um, and the, the tanka, which is very similar to the haiku. Um, and another form that I really like that I've been playing with recently is the tricube. It's a um, a poem where it has three stanzas and each stanza has three lines and each line has three syllables. Um, so that's what makes it a tricube. Um, and try to think about something negative and turn it into something positive. And that's all for me. I'm Beth Gully. Thank you for listening.